We move to a truck side as we shine the light on St. Lucia's sprint queen, Julian Alfred, from small island roots to global recognition. Julian's story is one of inspiration and determination. Born and raised in St. Lucia, Julian's love for athletics began at a young age, eventually reaching the historic achievement of becoming her island's first Olympic gold medalist. She shared the emotional moments of her homecoming last month on the Out the Blocks podcast with Leighton Levy and D Major, and uh, here's some of what she said. Overwhelming. Um, we're just filled with so much love and support for my fellow St. Lucians, and it was something I really enjoyed just celebrating, you know, with my people. You know, they did a lot for me, which I'm truly appreciative of what the government of St. Lucia did for me and um, to celebrate me. I'm really a simple person. The, they, can, they could have given me the smallest thing and I would have just been appreciate, appreciative of just mm. how they celebrated me and just seeing my fellow St. Lucians line up along the road, waited till night to celebrate me whenever mm -hmm. I passed to like the constituency, the community. They just waited until they could get a chance to just celebrate with me and that alone was a lot for me. And despite her success, she aims to enhance her overall athleticism and outlines her key areas for improvement. I have to get stronger, my core, strengthen my core more. Um, on the track, I, I think that getting stronger mentally as, as well as physically um, is really what I have to work on. As you know, I've spoken about the 200 for such a long time yeah. mm -hmm. and how I feel about it. So yeah, I think you hear that. <laughs> my coach is going to work with me in how I feel about the 200 and getting stronger and being more comfortable in running the 200. Yes. So I might do some like longer races, I don't know. But yes. I think it's really trying to help me get stronger mentally as I approach, you know, the 2025 season. Yes. Especially as it pertains to the, um, the 200. Yeah, the 23 year old says she's focused on the future, but not necessarily on being the fastest living woman. You know the good things that I've done but you know, I still have somewhere I want to go. I still have things that I want to accomplish. And he, we've spoken about the things that I, or where I want to go, what I want to accomplish, and I'm not there yet. Mm -hmm. So it keeps reminding me that, you know, I'm not there yet. So let's keep going. Let's keep working towards what I want in life. And I think that whole new self has kept me grounded or not. I, I don't feel like I've made it yet. Mm -hmm. So I think that alone keeps me pushing and hungry for more. Something I've realized is that you kind of chase times. And when you chase times, you tend to tense up a lot and you just won't get it. Let it come to you naturally. Mm. And I, I'm not chasing time whatsoever because sometimes you win an Olympic gold medal and nobody remember the time that you ran. Yep. Exactly. But you remember as an Olympic gold medalist. Yeah, so I, I no longer chase times. I no longer think that, oh, I want to get this record. I know I've tried so many times indoor to get the world record. It never came to me. But I think that for me, Thinking about 1049 is not going to help me whatsoever. Like I said, I want mm -hmm. accolades more than times. Mm -hmm. And if it takes 10, if it takes 10, six to, to win a world championship, um, gold medal, and that's what it takes to win it. I know I want accolades. I don't care about times. Times are meant to, records are meant to be broken. Mm -hmm. yep. And maybe have it for one, one day and somebody breaks it right after me. So records are not something that I'm looking after. Right. Yeah, we know she isn't chasing times, no, but at 10.72, not. she is the fastest woman ever from the Eastern Caribbean. She's number eight on the all-time list. women's list, so she's as fast as, um, yeah, as, as at this stage of her career that you could hope that she could get. And uh, really, really um, soaking up the adulation from her fans, not only in St. Lucia, but right throughout the Caribbean. Tia Lafond mm -hmm. had her homecoming in Dom Dominica okay. as well. Um, achieving gold medal status for her little island. But a great story here with Julian Alfred and an athlete. Sometimes in sport, Leighton, they say when you win a major title, like an Olympic title, you automatically get better, yeah. if only mentally. Because the pressure is, the pressure yes. is off, because you've yeah. already broken through that glass ceiling. Yes, so I, I'm, I say that to say that I think the best is still to come for her. Oh, yes. Listen, 
a lot of people, I don't think they understood what they saw in Paris. Yes. 1072 in driving rain, the wind was minus 0 0.1. Mm -hmm. In ideal circumstances, let's say she had a 1.5 wind and it was nice and dry. That's a 1065, 1063 actually. Yes. So she's already in 10 six shape and this is her first year as a pro. One of the things I like, and she said at the end, that the times really don't matter. It's the titles that matter. And I think, as she said, she's still a lot to, to, to achieve because look, what she did this year was extraordinary. World Indoor title, Olympic champion and Diamond League champion. Not very many people get to accomplish all those things in one year. Yes. And she's already done it in her first year. Mm -hmm. She's looking forward now to world, to world titles, not just a world title in, in, in Tokyo coming this next September, but world titles because she's only 23 years old. And one of the things that it continues to impress me about her is that every year she gets better, not just physically, but mentally as well. Yes. I remember her struggles during the pandemic when she wasn't able to go home and how it impacted her to the point where she literally had to redshirt the following season. And for her to come back and gradually improve over the years under the guidance of Eldrick Florial, who has helped her a lot, and to watch her now become an Olympic champion. I had a discussion with her in June, I think it was, mm -hmm. when she was launching her foundation. Yes. In, in St. Lucia. And I, I said to her, because she said she doesn't, she's still not comfortable doing the public thing and becoming the public figure thing. And I said, listen, you're going to have to get used to this because I see you winning the Olympic gold medal in 100. Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah. And I said, yeah, but you, so you have to embrace the idea <laughs> that the obscurity of Julian Alfred as a collegiate of athlete, the relative obscurity, yeah. is not going to change significantly. Yeah. And she's not, she acknowledged it to me that eventually she's going to have to get accustomed to it. And I think she's beginning to do that. And you've seen it so, so far this year. She's done a lot of interviews. She's a lot more comfortable now in the public space. And I think that confidence, she admitted, for example, that after the semifinal in, in Paris, she was more confident than ever that she was going to win the 100 final. Mm. That confidence now is going to translate into what we see on the track. And I think she's going to perhaps be, I don't want to say as, as unbeatable as, as you can, would ever see anybody become, but she's going to be very hard to beat going forward because now she knows what she's capable of and is mm. convinced of it to the point where we could be seeing a St. Lucia's version of Celia and Fraser Price in terms of her consistency and longevity. Yeah. Because I think she's an embodiment of what can be. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking forward to seeing what happens yeah. in the next Is there week. something to be said about what the success of uh, Tia Lafon from Dominica and um, Julian Alfred from St. Lucia can trigger for some of the smaller Caribbean islands from the standpoint of uh, inspiring a new level of commitment and investment in talented sports stars to get them to this level because I'm suggesting that Kirani James did it for Grenada, Grenada. Um, Kim Collins did it for St. Kitts and Nevis at the world championship level not the Olympic level but these are very small islands 100,000 odd population yeah. and they have been <coughs> able to achieve this and I think this should serve as a kind of inspiration to a lot of these other small Caribbean countries that you know, Jamaica and Bahamas and Trinidad and Tobago have had gold medals at the Olympics before, and now Eastern Caribbean countries are doing the same. So it speaks to the, the talent that, is, that abounds in these countries, but also the need for investment from the governments and the private sector and the sports administrators to invest in these talented sports teenagers because there is obviously um, talent that can transition into world levels down yeah. the years. Remember, we had the discussion a few months ago when yes. I said I don't think a lot of Caribbean governments take seriously the investment in sport that they should. And I think now with what we've seen from Telefon, what we've seen from Julian Alfred, is now the understanding of what it means. Yes. She's already been made a tourism ambassador because they're seeing the benefits of it now. And I think Dominica is going to build a, a state-of-the-art track and field facility, facility for, 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 with, for because the, of Thea Lafont. Yeah. That will manifest itself in terms of now the explosion of... I think 
I'm thinking here, I'm sitting here thinking that in the next 10, 15 years, yes. we're going to see an explosion of talent, relatively speaking, because they're talking about Dominica, 70,000 people or less, yeah. St. Lucia, 140,000. But I think we're going to see a lot more athletes coming from those, those territories because of what happened this year at the Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. When you look at, and, and it's already happening in St. Lucia to a degree, because you, look, you mentioned Zeta James. Yes. We've seen Darren Sammy. Mm -hmm. We've seen Johnson Charles. We've seen... Um, Tia Lafano, and of course, there's a bunch of youngsters coming through. Um, this little, what's her name, London, who just had just gone to the University of Texas, who said to me yeah. last year, earlier this year, that she wants to emulate Julian Alfred. Mm -hmm. So we're already seeing what is happening now in terms of the germination of what the inspiration is coming from these athletes. So I think in the next decade or so, given that the investment remains consistent or becomes consistent, we'll see an explosion of talent coming out of the Eastern Caribbean like we've never seen before, mm -hmm. primarily because of, the, of athletes like these who have now become the benchmark for athletes in these countries. And for the Caribbean, because Julian Alfred said that her inspiration was to in both. Yes. So it's not just for St. Lucia, it's for the Caribbean itself. Mm -hmm. These young athletes are now beginning to become the new standard by which athletes in the Caribbean are judged. Yeah, absolutely right, Leighton. Uh, great that you've made that point. Julian Alfred there a few minutes ago, redefining success beyond the record and her Olympic success. Stay tuned with us. Football coming up after the break.